Hello, welcome back to Startup Screen Printing. I wanted to follow up my last video um, where I introduced myself and my, hope, my hopes and goals for this channel um, with just a tour of my shop. So um, just want to show you guys what I've got, how I've got it set up um, so that you know what I'm working with. So um, obviously right here, the press. Um, this is uh, fairly new to me. I have this, I've had this a little under a year now. Um, I started off with a Raleigh Hopkins Jr. 4x4 uh, joystick press um, and uh, moved up to this one when I bought this uh, basically brand new at auction for um, <laughs> a lot less than it's brand new. Um, I'll just say one eighth less. <laughs> so look up the price of this and you'll know um, what I paid for this one. But it was it was it was an incredible deal, um, and I've just loved it. To have the XYZ registration has just been phenomenal. Um, it's been game changer for me. I mean, the joystick reg was great. It was a uh, the press um, it was a great press to start off with, and I sold that press to another guy who's starting his company, um, and it's going to be great for him. I, I definitely recommend those small presses. They're awesome to start off with. Um, but at some point it's time to, it's time to move up and, uh, it was time for me to move up. So I've got, um, this press, as you can see, I also have the, uh, laser alignment, um, on here as well. So that's also fairly new. I've had that about six months, um, and I'm loving it. So, um, over here is my, uh, washout area. So I've got my washout booth here. Um, I've got, you know, my power washer there. Uh, I actually run a, the hoses are coming out there. I actually run a hose out the window um, of the basement here in order to get water into here because there's no um, water access inside of the basement area. Um, keep in mind that this is a rental for me, so I can't do any um, major adjustments to the the house like that. So um, that's what I've got right here is my uh, screen rack. So. I've got my screens in here. These are ones that are coated. Um, obviously, lights are on in here, and I'm not worried about it. Um, so I've got some under here. Really, this sheet is just to um, help with dust. Um, uh, it's not preventing. Um, you can see down here at the bottom, it's not you know, fully surrounding. It's not preventing all light from getting in or anything like that. Um, it's really just mainly for dust. Um, and I haven't had any problems with... Um, uh, ex uh, the emulsion exposing or anything like that. So um, it's been great down here. Now, when I do expose screens or I coat them, um, I do have a light here that I'll turn on um, and I'll turn off my overhead lights um, j just in case. It's really just a safety factor, you know, not personal safety, but just, just in case it affects the emulsion enough. Um, but honestly, it's never been an issue, and I've done both of those with it just totally open and, and on, and I've not had any issues with the um, emulsion. Um, I do want to talk about this air compressor down here at some point in another video, but um, that's a California Air Tools quiet air compressor, and it is incredible. Um, so highly recommend that, especially if you're indoors, because it's way quieter um, than I mean, I, you, I could stand next to it and record a video right now, and you'd be able to hear me just fine. So it's really phenomenal. Um, right here, got some cables in the way here, got some stuff charging. Um, but this is kind of my workbench area. This is where I do my ink mixing and measuring. Um, I, like I said, water-based ink, and so I use Warp Drive a lot. So anytime I print, I have to mix um, fresh ink um, and add that Warp Drive. And then, um, you know, after it's like six or so hours, four to six hours, that ink is no longer any good. So um, I mix it fresh here every time um, and then toss it when I'm done. Um, I keep all of my supplies and stuff in. You can see all my inks in here. Um, and you can see just water-based inks. Uh, nothing else in there. Actually, I'll take that back. I do have one effing ink right here and some other plastisols back here that um, I had just gotten sent to me. Um, but I've never used them. <laughs> so um, if anybody wants a free gallon or free little pint of effing ink, let me know. I'll send it to you. Um, I'm not going to use it, but I do the color mixing uh, for the water-based ink, um, and it's all worked out great. So moving on over here, this is the side of the press that I actually print on. Um, I've got this rack back here where I hang the shirts. Um, so I use a flash dryer. I've just got a regular Ryanette flash dryer, um, and I will flash cure the shirts um, using that warp drive. 
Um, I'll turn on a fan, have some air blowing across the room so that it's not as you know harsh on the shirts themselves. As long as you have some air blowing across the shirt as it's being heated, it kind of helps regulate the temperature um, and keep from burning the shirts. Um, so I use a flash, and then whenever I'm done, instead of taking the shirt off, putting it on a conveyor dryer, I take it off and hang it up. So as I'm printing, um, I will hang up all my shirts through here. Um, and then, you know, if I run out of space, I'll pause for a second and, and take them down um, and have the hangers open back up um, for available. Uh, the rest of this, just more workspace and folding space uh, tables. Um, not really anything set out over here. This is just kind of as needed. I'll, you know, put a drink or the ink I'm using at that time for that per that job, um, anything like that. Have at this table, my phone, et cetera. Um, I've got a sewing machine for um, labels, um, you know, neck labels for sew on or anything like that um, that I'll use sometimes, but very rarely ever have to do that. This was really for another business that I had. Um, this is not screen printing. It's fly tying. Any of you trout fly fishermen, let me know. Uh, this is new. This is my tool chest here. I've got a, um, uh, I've got a printer here for, this is my film printer. Um, and then this is a, um, shipping label printer. Rolo works great. Um, various supplies and stuff in there. Uh, my heat presses. So I have the IQ 360 hat press and also the, uh, fusion IQ regular heat press. So I've had these, uh, about a year and a half now, um, and I love them. I don't use them a lot, but when I do use them, um, they really, really work out great. Um, I'm actually about to do some hats next week, um, and then I've got a few items to do the Ultra Color Max from Stahl's um, heat press on some apparel um, next week as well. So uh, the rest of this stuff over here, this is kind of the extra portion of the of the basement, you know, storage and stuff. Got some filing cabinets I'm getting rid of, some trash I need to get rid of. Um, you can see my exposure unit over there. So that's where I actually will expose the screens. Um, I don't have a place to actually set it and it be kind of out of the way. So I set it over there. Um, it's just the compression type. It's not a vacuum unit. Um, would love to upgrade someday, but not yet. Um, and then the rest of this stuff is just, this is just space for unboxing and folding and, and things like that. Um, I think that is pretty much it. Uh, I do have an air filtration system right here. Um, works out great. And then obviously a TV over here to watch TV while I'm printing, um, especially during baseball season. As you can see, I am a uh, Braves fan and a Broncos fan. Um, yeah, that's it. That is it. The rest of this, I have my workstation here um, where I do podcasts and these videos. So um, we'll have to know if you have any questions. Uh, what kind of gear are you using? Um, I want to hear about your shop. I'd love to see a video of your shop. I mean, a lot of you guys already have those out there and I enjoy watching those and seeing, um, how you set up the workflow and how you set up different areas. It's, it's, it's helpful for my own business. So I wanted to give you guys kind of a, a tour of my own shop. Um, and maybe you get some ideas, maybe it's brought up some questions and I would love to hear them. But, uh, until then, that's it. See you in the next video.